Hi, in the last video we talked about 16C average rate of change and in this video we'll talk about 16D instantaneous rate of change. The word instantaneous means to occur or done instantly. So when talking about instantaneous rate of change, we're talking about gradient at that very moment. Just a quick recap, this is what we did in the previous video. We looked at two uh, terms, second and chord. Second is this purple line which passes through two points on a curve, and chord is this green line. It's a line segment that joins two points on a curve. So a chord is a section of a second line. So this slide is probably the most important slide in this video. The difference between average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Clearly this graph is a quadratic function and in order to find the average rate of change we tend to take two points on this curve. So if I take these two green points as you can see I can draw a straight line that passes through both of them and I call this green line the second line. What about instantaneous rate of change? Remember we just said that instantaneous rate of change is the gradient at a very moment, so at a given point. But we know that we need two points in order to calculate the gradient because we haven't done calculus yet, so we can only estimate the gradient using two points. In the future, you should be able to find gradients accurately and precisely, but for now we can only use estimation to find the gradient. So if you look at this orange line, it only touches the graph once and there's a point. So we have this point of intersection, this orange point right there. We know that we need two points to find the gradient. So if I take a point that's very, very close to this orange point, as you can see, I, I've chosen this blue point right there. So these two points are very close together. Using the coordinates for these two points, I can find the gradient of this orange line. And we call this orange line the tangent line. So moving on, why called tangent? Well, the definition of tangent is that on a curve, the tangent line or simply tangent at a given point is the straight line that just touches the curve at that point. So to measure instantaneous rate of change, we're finding the gradient of a line that just touches the curve. And the word tangent actually came from Latin language meaning to touch. So here's an example. Estimate the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x at the point p to 9 on the curve y is equal to x cubed plus 1 by considering the second p q, where q has this coordinate. All right, x cubed meaning we have a cubic function, so the graph goes like this. And if we accurately plot the graph, you can see that um, it looks exactly like this little person here, which is nice. So we want to find instantaneous rate of change and we know one point. So we want to find the instantaneous rate of change at point P. However, we know that in order to find the gradient, we need two points. But to find instantaneous rate of change, we're going to take a point that's very close to point P. So point Q is very close to it because the X value is only one zero point zero one more. All right, so 2 and 2.01, they're very close. To find the corresponding y value for q, we're going to sub in this value, so 2.01, into the equation. And we found that this is the corresponding y value. You can evaluate this y value here. Um, however, you don't have to because it's probably going to be a decimal number. But to be as accurate as possible, we're going to keep this expression as it is. So we can just use this one in calculation. All right, now we know the two ordered pairs, we're going to find the gradient. The gradient is equal to rise over run, which is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let me label my points. This is y2, this is y1, and 2.01 is x2, and 2 is x1. So the gradient is going to be 2.01 cubed plus 1 minus 9 over 2.01 minus 2. And using a calculator, we found that the gradient is equal to 12.0601. Okay, moving on. Question 11. Uh, the graph represents the area covered by a spreading plant. 
Area is measured in square centimeters and time in weeks. So what is a spreading plant? Spreading plants, so some plants, when they grow, they're going to take up more space. So we are measuring the area and time in this question. So question A says, find the gradient of the second PQ. PQ, do we know the coordinates of PQ? Yes, we do. Uh, that's point P and that's point Q. If I draw a green line that passes through these two points, we know this is called a second line. And I know the coordinates for P and Q. So I can just plug them into the formula, rise over run to find the gradient of PQ. So since this is a problem solving question, we need a unit for 60. So what does 60 represent here? It represents the average rate of change of this area from the second week to the seventh week. So during this time, the plant is growing at this rate. All right, so that's question A. Question B says the point Q apostrophe has coordinates 3 and 330. Find the average rate of change of the area with respect to time for the interval 2 and 3, and hence estimate the instantaneous rate of change of the area of the plant at t is equal to 2. So we're given a point Q apostrophe, and point P and Q apostrophe are pretty close. So ideally, we want the two points to be as close as possible. But in this case, point P and Q apostrophe are pretty close. So um, we have T value equals two and three. So that's not too bad. So we're just going to use point P and Q apostrophe to estimate the gradient here. So the gradient of P Q apostrophe will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, it'll be 330 minus 300 over 3 minus 2. So the gradient at P is approximately 30. So it is approximately because we are estimating here. It is not the accurate gradient. So the instantaneous rate of change at point P is approximately 30 centimeter square per week. So just remember that we haven't done calculus yet, so we cannot find the gradient precisely and accurately. But by using two points that are very close to each other, we can try to obtain an accurate estimation of the gradient. So in this last example here, we're considering the curve y is equal to 2 to the power of x. This is actually an exponential function, and the shape looks like this. Okay. Um, in question A, it says using the second through the points where x is equal to 3 and x is 3.1, estimate the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x at the point where x is 3. So if we define this function to be f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x, then when x is equal to 3, the corresponding y value is 2 cubed, which is 8. And when x is 3.1, the corresponding y value is 2 to the power of 3.1. Now that we have our two ordered pairs, so when x is 3, y is 8. When x is 3.1, y is 2 to the power of 3.1. Using these two ordered pairs, we can find the gradient. So the gradient is equal to y2, so 2 to the power of 3.1 minus 8 over um, 3.1 minus 3 and and the gradient here is approximately 5.7419 all right question b says repeat for the points where x is 3 and x is 3.001 uh, when x is equal to 3 the corresponding y value is 8 when x is 3.001 the corresponding y value is 2 to the power of 3.001. Now that we know the two ordered pairs using the same formula, we can find the gradient. And the gradient here turns out to be 5.547. So this is interesting. If we compare the two gradients, we notice that the gradient in question B is less than the gradient in question A. So we're actually getting closer for our estimation. And once again, this question shows that when estimating instantaneous rate of change, the closer the two points are, uh, the more accurate estimation we're going to obtain. So try to pick two points that are as close as possible, and that will generate a more accurate estimation for the gradient. 
Hope you find this video helpful and hope to see you in the next video. Bye!